Section 1 of Famous Adventures and Prison Escapes of the Civil War. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Wales. Famous Adventures and Prison Escapes of the Civil War by Various. Section 1 War Diary of a Union Woman in the South. Edited by G. W. Cable. Part 1 the following diary was originally written in lead pencil and in a book the leaves of which were too soft to take ink legibly i have it direct from the hands of its writer a lady whom i have had the honour to know for nearly thirty years for good reasons the author's name is omitted and the initials of people and the names of places are sometimes fictitiously given many of the persons mentioned were my own acquaintances and friends when some twenty years afterward she first resolved to publish it she brought me a clear complete copy in ink it had cost much trouble she said for much of the pencil writing had been made under such disadvantages and was so faint that at times she could decipher it only under direct sunlight she had succeeded however in making a copy verbatim except for occasional improvement in the grammatical form of a sentence or now and then the omission for brevity's sake of something unessential the narrative has since been severely abridged to bring it within magazine limits in reading this diary one is much charmed with its constant understatement of romantic and perilous incidents and conditions but the original penciled pages show that even in copying the strong bent of the writer to be brief has often led to the exclusion of facts that enhance the interest of exciting situations and sometimes the omission robs her own heroism of due emphasis i have restored one example of this in a footnote following the perilous voyage down the mississippi g w cable one secession new orleans december one eighteen sixty i understand it now keeping journals is for those who cannot or dare not speak out so i shall set up a journal being only a rather lonely young girl in a very small and hated minority on my return here in november after a foreign voyage an absence of many months i found myself behind in knowledge of the political conflict but heard the dread sounds of disunion and war muttered in threatening tones surely no native-born woman loves her country better than i love america the blood of one of its revolutionary patriots flows in my veins and it is the union for which he pledged his life fortune and sacred honor that i love not any divided or special section of it so i have been reading attentively and seeking light from foreigners and natives on all questions at issue living from birth in slave countries both foreign and american and passing through one slave insurrection in early childhood the saddest and also the pleasantest features of slavery have been familiar if the south goes to war for slavery slavery is doomed in this country to say so is like opposing one drop to a roaring torrent sunday december blank eighteen sixty in this season for peace i had hoped for a lull in the excitement yet this day has been full of bitterness come g said mrs blank at breakfast leave your church for to-day and come with us to hear dr blank on the situation he will convince you it is good to be convinced i said i will go the church was crowded to suffocation with the elite of new orleans the preacher's text was shall we have fellowship with the stool of iniquity which frameth mischief as a law the sermon was over at last and then followed a prayer forever blessed be the fathers of the episcopal church for giving us a fixed liturgy when we met at dinner mrs f exclaimed now g you heard him prove from the bible that slavery is right and that therefore secession is were you not convinced i said i was so busy thinking how completely it proved too that brigham young is right about polygamy that it quite weakened the force of the argument for me this raised a laugh and covered my retreat january twenty sixth eighteen sixty one 
the solemn boom of cannon to-day announced that the convention have passed the ordinance of secession we must take a reef in our patriotism and narrow it down to state limits mine still sticks out all around the borders of the state it will be bad if new orleans should secede from louisiana and set up for herself then indeed i would be cabined cribbed confined the faces in the house are jubilant to-day why is it so easy for them and not for me to ring out the old ring in the new i am out of place january twenty eighth monday sunday has now got to be a day of special excitement the gentlemen save all the sensational papers to regale us with at the late sunday breakfast rob opened the battle yesterday morning by saying to me in his most aggressive manner gee i believe these are your sentiments and then he read aloud an article from the journal des débats expressing in rather contemptuous terms the fact that france will follow the policy of non-intervention when i answered well what do you expect this is not their quarrel he raved at me ending by a declaration that he would willingly pay my passage to foreign parts if i would like to go rob said his father keep cool don't let that threat excite you cotton is king just wait till they feel the pinch a little their tone will change i went to trinity church some union people who are not episcopalians go there now because the pastor has not so much chance to rail at the lord when things are not going to suit but yesterday was a marked sunday the usual prayer for the president and congress was changed to the governor and people of this commonwealth and their representatives in convention assembled the city was very lively and noisy this evening with rockets and lights in honor of secession mrs f in common with the neighbors illuminated we walked out to see the houses of others gleaming amid the dark shrubbery like a fairy scene the perfect stillness added to the effect while the moon rose slowly with calm splendor we hastened home to dress for a soiree but on the stairs edith said gee first come and help me dress phoebe and chloe the negro servants there is a ball to-night in aristocratic colored society this is chloe's first introduction to new orleans circles and henry judson phoebe's husband gave five dollars for a ticket for her chloe is a recent purchase from georgia we superintended their very stylish toilettes and edith said gee run into your room please and write a pass for henry put mr d s name to it why henry is free i said that makes no difference all colored people must have a pass if out late they choose a master for protection and always carry his pass henry chose mr d but he's lost the pass he had two the volunteers fort sumter february twenty fourth eighteen sixty one the toil of the week is ended nearly a month has passed since i wrote here events have crowded upon one another on the fourth the cannon boomed in honor of jefferson davis's election and the day before yesterday washington's birthday was made the occasion of another grand display and illumination in honor of the birth of a new nation and the breaking of that union which he labored to cement we drove to the race course to see the review of troops a flag was presented to the washington artillery by ladies senator judah benjamin made an impassioned speech the banner was orange satin on one side crimson silk on the other the pelican and brood embroidered in pale green and gold silver crossed cannon surmounted it orange-colored fringe surrounded it and crimson tassels drooped from it it was a brilliant unreal scene with military bands clashing triumphant music elegant vehicles high-stepping horses and lovely women richly apparelled wedding cards have been pouring in till the contagion has reached us edith will be married next thursday the wedding dress is being fashioned and the bridesmaids and groomsmen have arrived 
edith has requested me to be special mistress of ceremonies on thursday evening and i have told this terrible little rebel who talks nothing but blood and thunder yet faints at the sight of a worm that if i fill that office no one shall mention war or politics during the whole evening on pain of expulsion march tenth eighteen sixty one the excitement in this house has risen to fever heat during the past week the four gentlemen have each a different plan for saving the country and now that the bridal bouquets have faded the three ladies have again turned to public affairs lincoln's inauguration and the story of the disguise in which he travelled to washington is a never-ending source of gossip the family board being the common forum each gentleman as he appears first unloads his pockets of papers from all the southern states and then his overflowing heart to his eager female listeners who in turn relate inquire sympathize or cheer if i dare express a doubt that the path to victory will be a flowery one eyes flash cheeks burn and tongues clatter till all are checked up suddenly by a warning for order order from the amiable lady presiding thus we swallow politics with every meal we take a mouthful and read a telegram one eye on table the other on the paper one must be made of cool stuff to keep calm and collected but i say but little this war fever has banished small talk through all the black servants move about quietly never seeming to notice that this is all about them how can you speak so plainly before them i say why what matter they know that we shall keep the whip handle april thirteenth eighteen sixty one more than a month has passed since the last date here this afternoon i was seated on the floor covered with loveliest flowers arranging a floral offering for the fair when the gentlemen arrived and with papers bearing news of the fall of fort sumter which at her request i read to mrs f april twenty the last few days have glided away in a halo of beauty but nobody has time or will to enjoy it war war is the one idea the children play only with toy cannons and soldiers the oldest inhabitant goes by every day with his rifle to practice the public squares are full of companies drilling and are now the fashionable resorts we have been told that it is best for women to learn how to shoot too so as to protect themselves when the men have all gone to battle every evening after dinner we adjourn to the back lot and fire at a target with pistols yesterday i dined at uncle ralph's some members of the bar were present and were jubilant about their brand new confederacy it would soon be the grandest government ever known uncle ralph said solemnly no gentlemen the day we seceded the star of our glory set the words sunk into my mind like a knell and it made me wonder at the mind that could recognize that and yet adhere to the doctrine of secession in the evening i attended a farewell gathering at a friend's whose brothers are to leave this week for richmond there was music no minor chord was permitted three tribulation april twenty five yesterday i went with cousin e to have her picture taken the picture galleries are doing a thriving business many companies are ordered off to take possession of fort pickens florida and all seem to be leaving sweethearts behind them the crowd was in high spirits they didn't dream that any destinies will be spoiled when i got home edith was reading from the daily paper of the dismissal of miss g from her place as teacher for expressing abolition sentiments and that she would be ordered to leave the city soon a lady came with a paper setting forth that she has established a company we are nothing if not military for making lint and getting stores of linen to supply the hospitals my name went down if it hadn't my spirit would have been wounded as with sharp spears before night next came a little girl with a subscription paper to get a flag for a certain company the little girls especially the pretty ones are kept busy trotting around with subscription lists latest of all came little guy mr f s youngest clerk the pet of the firm as well as of his home a mere boy of sixteen such senseless sacrifices seem a sin he chattered brightly but lingered about saying good-bye 
he got through it bravely until edith's husband incautiously said you didn't kiss your little sweetheart as he always called ellie who had been allowed to sit up he turned and suddenly broke into agonizing sobs and then ran down the steps may ten i am tired and ashamed of myself last week i attended a meeting of the lent society to hand in the small contribution of linen i had been able to gather we scraped lent till it was dark a paper was shown entitled the volunteer's friend started by the girls of the high school and i was asked to help the girls with it i positively declined to-day i was pressed into service to make red flannel cartridge bags for ten-inch columbiads i basted while mrs s sewed and i felt ashamed to think that i had not the moral courage to say i don't approve of your war and won't help you particularly in the murderous part of it may twenty seven this has been a scenic sabbath various companies about to depart for virginia occupied the prominent churches to have their flags consecrated the streets were resonant with the clangor of drums and trumpets e and myself went to christ church because the washington artillery were to be there june thirteen to-day has been appointed a fast day i spent the morning writing a letter on which i put my first confederate postage stamp it is of a brown colour and has a large five in the centre to-morrow must be devoted to all my foreign correspondence before the expected blockade cuts us off june twenty nine i attended a fine luncheon yesterday at one of the public schools a lady remarked to a school official that the cost of provisions in the confederacy was getting very high butter especially being scarce and costly never fear my dear madam he replied texas alone can furnish butter enough to supply the whole confederacy we'll soon be getting it from there it's just as well to have this sublime confidence july fifteen the quiet of midsummer reigns but ripples of excitement break around us as the papers tell of skirmishes and attacks here and there in virginia rich mountain and carrick's ford were the last you see said mrs d at breakfast to-day my prophecy is coming true that virginia will be the seat of war indeed i burst out forgetting my resolution not to argue you may think yourselves lucky if this war turns out to have any seat in particular so far no one especially connected with me has gone to fight how glad i am for his mother's sake that rob's lameness will keep him at home mr f mr s and uncle ralph are beyond the age for active service and edith says mr d cannot go now she is very enthusiastic about other people's husbands being enrolled and regrets that her ellix is not strong enough to defend his country and his rights july twenty two what a day i feel like one who has been out in a high wind and cannot get my breath the newsboys are still shouting with their extras battle of bull's run list of the killed battle of manassas list of the wounded tender-hearted mrs f was sobbing so she could not serve the tea but nobody cared for tea oh gee she said three thousand of our own dear southern boys are lying out there my dear fanny spoke mr f they are heroes now they died in a glorious cause and it is not in vain this will end it the sacrifice had to be made but those killed have gained immortal names then rob rushed in with a new extra reading of the spoils captured and grief was forgotten words cannot paint the excitement rob capered about and cheered edith danced around ringing the dinner bell and shouting victory mrs f waved a small confederate flag while she wiped her eyes and mr d hastened to the piano and in his most brilliant style struck up dixie followed by my maryland and the bonny blue flag do not look so gloomy g whispered mr s you should be happy to-night for as mr f says now we shall have peace and is that the way you think of the men of your own blood and race i replied but an utter scorn came over me and choked me and i walked out of the room what proof is there in this dark hour that they are not right only the emphatic answer of my own soul 
to-morrow i will pack my trunk and accept the invitation to visit at uncle ralph's country house september twenty five when i opened the door of mrs f s room on my return the rattle of two sewing machines and a blaze of colour met me ah gee you are just in time to help us these are coats for jeff thompson's men all the cloth in the city is exhausted these flannel lined oilcloth table covers are all we could obtain to make overcoats for thompson's poor boys they will be very warm and serviceable serviceable yes the federal army will fly when they see those coats i only wish i could be with the regiment when these are shared around yet i helped make them seriously i wonder if any soldier will ever wear these remarkable coats the most bewildering combination of brilliant intense reds greens yellows and blues in big flowers meandering over as vivid grounds and as no table cover was large enough to make a coat the sleeves of each were of a different colour and pattern however the coats were duly finished then we set to work on grey pantaloons and i have just carried a bundle to an ardent young lady who wishes to assist a slight gloom is settling down and the inmates here are not quite so cheerfully confident as in july four a beleaguered city october twenty two when i came to breakfast this morning rob was capering over another victory ball's bluff he would read me we pitched the yankees over the bluff and asked me in the next breath to go to the theatre this evening i turned on the poor fellow don't tell me about your victories you vowed by all your idols that the blockade would be raised by october one and i notice the ships are still serenely anchored below the city gee you are just as pertinacious yourself in championing your opinions what sustains you when nobody agrees with you october twenty eighth when i dropped in at uncle ralph's last evening to welcome them back the whole family were busy at a great centre table copying sequestration acts for the confederate government the property of all northerners and unionists is to be sequestrated and uncle ralph can hardly get the work done fast enough my aunt apologized for the rooms looking chilly she feared to put the carpets down as the city might be taken and burned by the federals we are living as much packed up as possible a signal has been agreed upon and the instant the army approaches we shall be off to the country again great preparations are being made for defence at several other places where i called the women were almost hysterical they seemed to look forward to being blown up with shot and shell finished with cold steel or whisked off to some northern prison when i got home edith and mr d had just returned also alex said edith i was up at your orange lots to-day and the sour oranges are dropping to the ground while they cannot get lemons for our sick soldiers that's my kind considerate wife replied mr d why didn't i think of that before jim shall fill some barrels to-morrow and take them to the hospitals as a present from you november ten surely this year will ever be memorable to me for its perfection of natural beauty never was sunshine such pure gold or moonlight such transparent silver the beautiful custom prevalent here of decking the graves with flowers on all saints day was well fulfilled so profuse and rich were the blossoms on all hallow eve mrs s and myself visited a large cemetery the chrysanthemums lay like great masses of snow and flame and gold in every garden we passed and were piled on every costly tomb and lowly grave the battle of manassas robed many of our women in mourning and some of those who had no graves to deck were weeping silently as they walked through the scented avenues a few days ago mrs e arrived here she is a widow of natchez a friend of mrs f s and is travelling home with the dead body of her eldest son killed at manassas she stopped two days waiting for a boat and begged me to share her room and read her to sleep saying she couldn't be alone since he was killed she feared her mind would give way so i read all the comforting chapters to be found till she dropped into forgetfulness but the recollection of those weeping mothers in the cemetery banished sleep for me november twenty sixth 
the lingering summer is passing into those misty autumn days i love so well when there is gold and fire above and around us but the glory of the natural and the gloom of the moral world agree not well together this morning mrs f came to my room in dire distress you see she said cold weather is coming on fast and our poor fellows are lying out at night with nothing to cover them there is a wail for blankets but there is not a blanket in town i have gathered up all the spare bed clothing and now want every available rug or table cover in the house can't i have yours g we must make these small sacrifices of comfort and elegance you know to secure independence and freedom very well i said denuding the table this may do for a drummer boy december twenty sixth eighteen sixty one the foul weather cleared off bright and cool in time for christmas there is a midwinter lull in the movement of troops in the evening we went to the grand bazaar in the st louis hotel got up to clothe the soldiers this bazaar has furnished the gayest most fashionable war work yet and has kept social circles in a flutter of pleasant heroic excitement all through december everything beautiful or rare garnered in the homes of the rich was given for exhibition and in some cases for raffle and sale there were many fine paintings statues bronzes engravings gems laces in fact heirlooms and bric-a-brac of all sorts there were many lovely creole girls present in exquisite toilettes passing to and fro through the decorated rooms listening to the band clash out the anvil chorus january second eighteen sixty two i am glad enough to bid sixty one good-bye most miserable year of my life what ages of thought and experience have i not lived in it the city authorities have been searching houses for firearms it is a good way to get more guns and the homes of those men suspected of being unionists were searched first of course they went to dr b s he met them with his own delightful courtesy wish to search for arms oh certainly gentlemen he conducted them all through the house with smiling readiness and after what seemed a very thorough search bowed them politely out his gun was all the time safely reposing between the canvas folds of a cot bed which lean folded up together against the wall in the very room where they had ransacked the closets queerly the rebel families have been the ones most anxious to conceal all weapons they have dug graves quietly at night in the back yards and carefully wrapping the weapons buried them out of sight every man seems to think he will have some private fighting to do to protect his family five married friday january twenty fourth eighteen sixty two on steamboat w mississippi river with a changed name i open you once more my journal it was a sad time to wed when one knew not how long the expected conscription would spare the bridegroom the women-folk knew how to sympathize with a girl expected to prepare for her wedding in three days in a blockaded city and about to go far from any base of supplies they all rallied round me with tokens of love and consideration and sewed shopped mended and packed as if sewing soldier clothes and they decked the whole house and the church with flowers music breathed wine sparkled friends came and went it seemed a dream and comes up now and again out of the afternoon sunshine where i sit on deck the steamboat slowly ploughs its way through lumps of floating ice a novel sight to me and i look forward wondering whether the new people i shall meet will be as fierce about the war as those in new orleans that past is to be all forgotten and forgiven i understand thus the kindly acts that sought to brighten the threshold of a new life february fifteen village of x we reached arkansas landing at nightfall mr y the planter who owns the landing took us right up to his residence he ushered me into a large room where a couple of candles gave a dim light and close to them and sewing as if on a race with time sat mrs y and a little negro girl who was so black and sat so stiff and straight she looked like an ebony image 
this was a large plantation the wise knew h very well and were very kind and cordial in their welcome and congratulations mrs y apologized for continuing her work the war had pushed them this year in getting the negroes clothed and she had to sew by dim candles as they could obtain no more oil she asked if there were any new fashions in new orleans next morning we drove over to our home in this village it is the county seat and was till now a good place for the practice of h s profession it lies on the edge of a lovely lake the adjacent planters count their slaves by the hundreds some of them live with a good deal of magnificence using service of plate having smoking-rooms for the gentlemen built off the house and entertaining with great hospitality the baptists episcopalians and methodists hold services on alternate sundays in the courthouse all the planters and many others near the lake shore keep a boat at their landing and a raft for crossing vehicles and horses it seemed very piquant at first this taking our boat to go visiting and on moonlit nights it was charming the woods around are lovelier than those in louisiana though one misses the moaning of the pines there is fine fishing and hunting but these cotton estates are not so pleasant to visit as sugar plantations but nothing else has been so delightful as one morning my first sight of snow and a wonderful new white world february twenty seven the people here have hardly felt the war yet there are but two classes the planters and the professional men form one the very poor villagers the other there is no middle class ducks and partridges squirrels and fish are to be had h has bought me a nice pony and cantering along the shore of the lake in the sunset is a panacea for mental worry six how it was in arkansas march eleventh eighteen sixty two the serpent has entered our eden the rancor and excitement of new orleans have invaded this place if an incautious word betrays any want of sympathy with popular plans one is traitorous ungrateful crazy if one remains silent and controlled then one is phlegmatic cool-blooded unpatriotic cool-blooded heavens if only they knew it is very painful to see lovable and intelligent women rave till the blood mounts to face and brain the immediate cause of this access of war fever has been the battle of p ridge they scout the idea that price and van dorn have been completely worsted those who brought the news were speedily told what they ought to say no it is only a serious check they must have more men sent forward at once this country must do its duty so the women say another company must be raised we were guests at a dinner party yesterday mrs a was very talkative now ladies you must all join in with a vim and help equip another company mrs l she said turning to me are you not going to send your husband now use a young bride's influence and persuade him he would be elected one of the officers mrs a i replied longing to spring up and throttle her the bible says when a man hath married a new wife he shall not go to war for one year but remain at home and cheer up his wife well h i questioned as we walked home after crossing the lake can you stand the pressure or shall you be forced into volunteering indeed he replied i will not be bullied into enlisting by women or by men i will sooner take my chance of conscription and feel honest about it you know my attachments my interests are here these are my people i could never fight against them but my judgment disapproves their course and the result will inevitably be against us this morning the only irishman left in the village presented himself to h he has been our wood sawyer our gardener and factotum but having joined the new company his time recently has been taken up with drilling h and mr r feel that an extensive vegetable garden must be prepared while he is here to assist or we shall be short of food and they sent for him yesterday so mike are you really going to be a soldier yes sir but faith mr l i don't see the use of me going to stop a bullet when sure as i'm willing for it to go where it blazes march eighteenth eighteen sixty two 
there has been unusual gaiety in this little village the past few days the ladies from the surrounding plantations went to work to get up a festival to equip the new company as annie and myself are both brides recently from the city requisition was made upon us for engravings costumes music garlands and so forth annie's heart was in the work not so with me nevertheless my pretty things were captured and shown with just as good a grace last evening as if willingly lent the ball was a merry one one of the songs sung was nelly gray in which the most distressing feature of slavery is bewailed so pitifully to sing this at a festival for raising money to clothe soldiers fighting to perpetuate that very thing was strange march twenty eighteen sixty two a man professing to act by general handman's orders is going through the country impressing horses and mules the overseer of a certain estate came to inquire of h if he had not a legal right to protect the property from seizure mr l said yes unless the agent could show some better credentials than his bare word this answer soon spread about and the overseer returned to report that it excited great indignation especially among the company of new volunteers h was pronounced a traitor and they declared that no one so untrue to the confederacy should live there when h related the circumstance at dinner his partner mr r became very angry being ignorant of h s real opinions he jumped up in a rage and marched away to the village thoroughfare there he met a batch of the volunteers and said we know what you said of us and i have come to tell you that you are liars and you know where to find us of course i expected a difficulty but the evening passed and we retired undisturbed not long afterward a series of indescribable sounds broke the stillness of the night and the tramp of feet was heard outside the house mr r called out it's a serenade h get up and bring out all the wine you have annie and i peeped through the parlor window and lo it was the company of volunteers and a diabolical band composed of bones and broken-winded brass instruments they piped and clattered and whined for some time and then swarmed in while we ladies retreated and listened to the clink of glasses march twenty two h and mr r and mike have been very busy the last few days getting the acre of kitchen garden ploughed and planted the stay law has stopped all legal business and they have welcomed this work but to-day a thunderbolt fell in our household mr r came in and announced that he had agreed to join the company of volunteers annie's confederate principles would not permit her to make much resistance and she has been sewing and mending as fast as possible to get his clothes ready stopping now and then to wipe her eyes poor annie she and max have been married only a few months longer than we have but a noble sense of duty animates and sustains her End of section one.